MSI are rather good at making gaming laptops. They've been doing it for a while and they generally know what we want. This is their GE65. It's their mid-range chassis with some top-end specs. This model has an i7 9th gen 9750H, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte of NVMe storage, and you also get a full fat RTX 2070. Now it is still a mobile package and so you get around about desktop RTX 2060 levels of performance but that's still pretty impressive with a laptop this thin. Now of course it isn't perfect, the chassis being this small generally means that the CPU and the GPU get pretty hot like 100 degrees Celsius on the CPU hot and about 85 degrees Celsius on the GPU, which is pretty toasty. With that said though, the fan noise isn't too obnoxious. It's certainly pretty standard for this sort of class of laptop and the spec that the laptop has and so it's not too bad. Performance numbers though, well, they're just really impressive. Here's a look at those results. So as always, starting off with 3D Mark Far Strike, we have a really impressive score here of just shy of 17,000 points, which it's actually a good bit higher than the Razer Blade laptop I checked out recently with a similar spec. On that same vein, the Battlefield 5 result is also a good bit higher, 103 FPS average, which is incredibly impressive, with a 1% low of 86 FPS. When we're looking at PUBG, we're looking at 107 FPS average with a minimum of 85. All of these are testing on their kind of ultra epic settings kind of thing. So, of course, if you do want to leverage the 240 hertz display, you can always turn them down and get even better FPS results. But for Fortnite, again, on epic settings, we're looking at 141 average with a minimum of 91. So even on ultra settings, a very smooth and very enjoyable playing experience. The same goes for Apex Legends, again, on kind of maxed out settings. Things, we're looking at 122 FPS average with a minimum of a 96 and so again a very smooth very enjoyable experience and you can always turn down the settings too. Great FPS results are one thing but a display that actually lets you see them is another since still a lot of gaming laptops are coming with just 60 hertz displays and more and more are coming with 144 hertz but MSI clearly th thought that that just wasn't enough and strapped a 240 hertz display to the laptop which makes this possible possibly the smoothest gaming experience I've had on a laptop basically ever. It's incredibly enjoyable to play games on this. I, I cannot tell you just how smooth it is, and especially for more fast-paced FPS games where you can really leverage the frame rate to your advantage, it's just really, really awesome. Now, you might be thinking that since this is 240 hertz that you probably have some pretty naff viewing angles and color accuracy. Happily though, you'd be wrong there because the viewing angles are pretty decent. They're nothing to shout about on either direction, but they're certainly not bad, and the color accuracy is overall pretty decent. You have about 95% coverage of the sRGB spectrum, which while not going to be your next you know, color sensitive photo editing laptop, is certainly good enough for casual use. The keyboard isn't bad either. Now it's still a non-ISO layout, which really offends my British sensibilities, but overall it's still pretty nice to type on. It does also to have the FN key in the wrong place in my opinion, but overall the typing experience is good if a little mushy key feel, but the keys are well spaced out and overall very nice to type on. The trackpad is also pretty decent too with no real issues there. The IO is also fairly well filled out with three illuminated USB ports, a Type-C port, also gigabit ethernet, mini display port and HDMI, an SD card reader and headphone and microphone jacks to round out the collection. Of course also stuff like AC Wi-Fi and some remarkably good built-in speakers. Battery life is fine, it's kind of what you'd expect from a gaming laptop with a couple of hours of sort of web browsing, word processing use and about an hour of gaming before it runs dry and you need to plug into this absolutely mammoth power brick that's incredibly heavy and you're gonna need to carry it around with you because you will need to plug in a fair bit. The main downside here is the price. You're looking at about £2,200 to pick one of these up and while that is technically cheaper than the Razer Blade 15 Advance that I reviewed fairly recently while still having a better spec, namely a full fat 2070 and one terabyte of NVMe storage, not the 240 gig that Razer gave you, cough, cough. Um, it's still a relatively expensive and still relatively premium laptop compared to something like the Acer Triton 500, which gives you a fairly similar spec, a 2060 instead of a 2070, for only 1500 pounds rather than the 2200, which can make this a little bit hard to justify. But if you want a powerful laptop that's well built, has great functionality, 
and has a beautiful screen and a great gaming experience. And this is certainly something that I could recommend to you, especially if you don't mind the price too much. Would I put one on my desk? I'd probably go with a Triton 500 and save my money personally, but that's really personal preference. And I would more than happily recommend this to anyone who, again, is, is willing to deal with the price for the a little bit of extra specs, extra storage, and a brilliant screen. Now, with that said, those are my thoughts. I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the laptop? Is it too expensive for you? Is it kind of the right price points? And is the spec and the display something that you're really interested in? Anything at all, let me know in those comments down below. Of course, if you want to pick one of these up or check out pricing local to you and when you watch this, then do take a look at the link in the description down below. That'll take you to a local Amazon store where you can hopefully see all of that. You can also hit the subscribe button with a bell notification icon to be notified of new videos. I post every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, so make sure you stay tuned for those. And there's also a load of links in the description down below. There's stuff like Amazon and Overclock UK affiliate links, which don't cost you anything to use, but massively help me out when you do use them. There's Patreon if you want to support me directly and get cool rewards for doing so, or there's merch for hoodies or t-shirts like this one, or a load of other designs as well. You can also check out more videos over there if you want to keep watching, and there's also a few other links like Private Internet Access, which is a great and cheap VPN, or Humble Bundle for cheap games to support charities too. Otherwise, that's pretty much it. As said, if you've got any questions, leave those in the comments down below, and we'll see you all in the next video.